Okay, so concept number one was the vertical swing plane, right? And, and what that is, is really the angle that the club approaches the ball on and then exits on. So this is a bob iron, let's say 60 degrees of uh, you know, lie angle. I could have this thing in the Dave Pell's putting track, right? And take it straight back and straight through. I don't know how good I did there, but you get the idea. And even though I might hit the golf ball with the lie angle correct, you know, mark the face or mark with a tape or whatever on the bottom, I could still potentially uh, do that with what would be a 90 degree vertical swing plane. Of course, if I kept it on the ground here, and somehow you know, made the ball go straight, that'd be a zero degree vertical swing plane. So what a lot of people do is, of course, they get the club below the plane on this side, severely below, because the way you want to set up these sticks is you want to have the the uh, the uh, stick on the on the uh, away from the target side from you. You want you want that stick to be a little bit you know more correct. In other words, I would maybe have the real plane line uh, about a three four inch gap. So here's my golf ball right here. So you can see that's below plane. Might start down arching my wrist, <laughs> and then you know all, all the other situations that go on with that. And this, of course, would be on plane if it had that three or four inch gap. Of course, with a three or four inch gap, there's a little room to be below. But really, you're just trying to like picture this, and the sticks are helping. Okay. Now, um, on this side of the ball, so if you extended this line, I put this on the ground right here. If you extended this line. out uh, into space, let's say that was the actual line you want, you want a little bit more room on this side. Maybe, you know, I got an open hand right here, you know, <laughs> medium cadet, you know, like this right here. Because there's going to be some late plane angle changes, not necessarily vertical swing plane, but regular golf swing plane angle changes that may require to have, you have a little bit more room on this side. So what we're looking for is, we're looking for the club to go back on plane, right? Get to the top of the swing, you know, hopefully point right at the target. I'm down on plane, not below plane. Trace a straight line down here at the bottom, not necessary to do it on this side or that side. And then exit the same, you know, open hand distance from the uh, stick on this side. And if you do that, you sort of want this look of the, the club shaft, you know, matching that line, and then this button of the club pointing at the target, and then high hands and low club. Okay, so let's say you have the club coming below plane with you. This, this is a very typical situation. This is what we call this left arm and club right here is the left arm flying wedge. Homer Kelly named it that because it, it looks like a triangle, like a wedge shape, right? So an address. You might not even have a wedge, you know, because your, your club might be a little bit out of line with your left arm. But as soon as you take the club back, you form that wedge. And then, you know, depending on what, you, what your swing's like is how much you rotate this wedge in the backswing. Uh, Tiger Woods, for one, rotates it a lot. Jack Nicklaus, for somebody else, hardly rotated it at all comparatively, okay? But, you know, let's say you have an orthodox top of the backswing position, no matter how you get there. If you... If you put torque on this club in the change of direction, that wedge is going to go this way. And you have to put torque on that left arm and that club on that wedge when you change direction. That's how you load power into your swing. Okay, so as this flying wedge over rotates, and you see you're below plane and you start down arching the wrist because the ball is going to go there if you don't. So what, what I would suggest you do is you learn to rotate the wedge to get it back on plane. How do you do that? Well, you have to do it in a concerted effort. You just can't let it sag. You have to apply some, what we call tumble. And what tumble means is, is simply this. When the club is on the back side of the hands, if you just let the club go, it would fall this way. If you just let the face go, it would, it would, it would, it would open. That's, that's what we call 
backward tumble. So the shaft wants to tumble backwards when it's on this side of the hand, and the face wants to tumble open. What you need to do is you got to get the sucker on the other side of your hands. And the way you do that is with a little bit in the hands and a little bit in the arm and, and start turning the club. This is what Tiger was doing in the Masters where he was trying to tumble the whole thing over. The problem is if, if that beats you to the ball and Tiger's strong enough where that could beat him to the ball, the left shoulder's not far away from the ball enough that impact, you stick it in the ground, which is something he did a couple of times. But anyway, you have the wedge and we want you to rotate the wedge to have it on plane on this side of the ball. And then on the other side of the ball, with a, with a sort of ball bouncing attitude, right? Like that golf ball in your hand, and maybe about a yard forward, maybe about the, about the bottom of this fence right here. You take that ball, boom, and throw it, and have it bounce straight down the line. That's gonna give you a pretty good carry with your hands. That's gonna help a little bit with this not getting below plane. And also, what it's gonna do it's going to get your right shoulder not to be too far underneath, which is going to make you swing too far out the right field. So one of the exercises that I suggest is that, you know, you grip the club short, you put it on your right hip like this, and you can, and then you can get on this side of the ball, I'll just do it this way so you can see me, you know, on your right hip, you know, on this side of the ball, and what you want is you want that face to be toe up in that position, because a lot of times what happens when people do this, is because they were down arching anyway, right? When they when they actually get to, I'll uh, do it the same way. When they actually get to this position, the back of their left hand's too much at the ground, right? So that we want that toe to be in the air right there. And then as this goes through, as this goes through, and we don't need these guys anymore. As this goes through and goes to the finish, we want the butt of the club to trace that line, and we want this one last point. So you can, if you if you put the club right here and get the toe in the air position, then you start working to the one last point. If you do anything funny right here, you're going to impale yourself, like on my big belly, right? So that's the look. And if you continue that to the finish, you're going to have more of this Tom Watch and Jack Nicholas look at the finish with high hands and low club. Now this, on this side of it, looks like this. Toe in the air, one last point, high hands and low club. Okay, now. Let's say you hit a left shot doing these things, okay? So because all of a sudden, you were really fighting the right shot, and that's why your vertical got real low. See, what winds up happening to people, and I'll put these back here to show you. We'll go yellow on this side again, right? Is hit it on the same kind of line we had before is when they get it low on this side, they have to get it low on this side. And that's what gives you a low vertical swing plate number on track, man. There's a lot of ways that could happen, right? I mean, you could be high right here and then just start shallowing it out so you don't stick it in the ground. But you, you see what we're trying to prevent. So as this club gets on this side of your hip right here and, and comes up the plane, it's gonna probably have more of that look where if you went below and below, you're gonna have more of this helicopter, low hands, high finish. Okay, so you might have been hitting you might have been hitting some right shots because you get like this, right? Below plane, you can only down hard so much. You start unwinding, the club doesn't square up, you hit a right the right shot, or you know, just a little bit to the right shot. So as you start rotating that wedge, right, almost you can almost take this uh, attitude of going to the top like this and trying to put the club here just to kind of feel what this would feel like. I mean obviously what you're really doing is you're putting it on plane, then you're pulling it back here, and then by the time you're over here, it gets there. But just for the sake of somebody who was reverse tumbling, it wouldn't hurt them to get here and just put the club over there. So you can feel this wedge, just flying wedge, rotate. So now you might hit some left shots, and there are three reasons that you might hit a left shot as you start putting this into your game. One would be real simple. Because you were down arching before, you continue to down arch and you get this, when we get to this position right here, the club's a little bit more face down than it would be. That's one reason. Second reason could be, well, you just, you, you might fix everything, but you still have a little bit of a path problem. In other words, you've got the high finish on the end of it, so you're not cutting it off. And so you, if, you, if you get this below, right on this side, but then do the correct finish, you'll actually have sort of an inside-out path and you can hit an inside-out path hook if the face is still 
close to the path, which probably will be for this type of play. And then the one more way that anybody could hit a hook is just having that golf club, I'll put it right here in my, is to have this little left to your left arm thing right here. If, if you just, you know, beat your, if you just get on the wrong side of this club right here, it can hurt you. But mostly what it'll do is close the face. Close the face. You always got to be mindful that you're trying to keep your hips ahead, and look at it this way, your hips ahead of your hands and your hands ahead of the club. That's how that club face doesn't, you know, doesn't close just arbitrarily, right? So, to review, get your backswing in an orthodox position at the top, just enough tumble, tumble, just enough tumble to get the club on plane here. Hit the ball with the ball bouncing attitude with the pivot. Boom, putting that club in that position right there. One last point and club down. I think you'll find that your vertical swing plane numbers will go up and your scores will go down.